Hey, it's Neil from 2AF.com. Recently, a friend of mine sent a video of a guy talking about the first rifle he ever built. Uh, while this is not the first rifle I ever bought, it is the first rifle I ever built. First rifle I ever bought is gone. It was a pretty plain, boring gun, fixed front sight, 20 inch, heavy barrel, A2 carry handle. Uh, and I sold that gun to buy this gun. That was back in 99. Uh, back then, the assault weapons ban was going on, and so you couldn't have things like flash hiders, threaded barrels under the flash hiders, bayonet lugs, pistol grips, adjustable stocks, unless you bought a gun that was built as a complete rifle before the ban went into effect, and that was in 1994. Uh, so I spent probably too much money on this gun because it was a pre ban gun, and then I was able to build it however I wanted. And back when I first got this gun, it just had the plain plastic hand guards and was a flat top had a plain m4 stock on it the m4 stock back then was pretty brand new the waffle pattern stock um but i pretty quickly bought a surefire m500 millennium light that was the plastic hand guards it had the big flashlight built into the hand guards uh, back then free float rails were not really very widespread at all uh, kind of plastic hand guards were what you saw most on guns uh, there were some free float hand guards on there, but they were not easy to install, especially for somebody who was new to guns like I was. Um, and uh, I also had a Trigicon Reflex. Uh, back then, it was pretty much a Trigicon Reflex and an aim point. Uh, I don't even think that EOTech was really a thing back then. I think they had the Bushnell hollow sights, uh, but I don't think that they had been built into EOTechs then. If they were, they definitely weren't popular. Really all there was, like I said, was a Trigicon Reflex and the Aimpoint uh, Comp M2, I think it was at that time. A friend of mine had the Aimpoint, so I got the Reflex. Um, and I probably ran it like that for a few years. I really liked ACOGs. ACOGs have been around since the 80s, uh, and they didn't really start to become very popular until the early 2000s, and that's about the first time I got one. Uh, this is a standard TA31 with a donut reticle. Um, shortly after that, uh, ARMS came out with the SIR system. Now this is not the first one that was on the gun. I think the first one that was on the gun was called the 45, and it basically ended right at uh, the gas block here. Shortly after that, they came out with this model. I think it's the 58, and the 58 was the same thing except it had just a small extension that came out to surround that front sight. Uh, now the ARMS SIR system, is pretty unique looking and that's probably one of the best things it's got going for it uh, because as time has gone on it's probably not one of the better rail systems that you'll run across what it was though is one of the first rail systems free float rail systems you're going to run across and it was especially the first one that pretty much anybody could install themselves and that was what really kind of turned me on to it uh, they had the M model, which is what this one was. It required the removal of the delta ring and the weld spring and uh, the snap ring. Uh, and then there was the C model, which was pretty much the same thing, except it had a cutout around here and you didn't have to remove any of that. Um, I met one of my longtime friends, uh, John from, um, from UW Gear. He... Uh, I met him on air15.com because I was asking for help to take the delta ring off of this gun so that I can put the arms rail on. I wasn't 100% sure what to do and he was, so he invited me over his house and like I said, this has got to be 2002, 2001, I, I'm not sure, it was a while ago. And uh, it took me over there and just with a Dremel we cut through uh, the delta ring and then you were able to take the snap ring and the weld spring off and, and you drop this arms rail on. Um, when I got rid of the M500 and put the arms rail on, I needed a light. And man, the Surefire M900 had just recently come out. And man, this thing is huge. But at the time, it put out probably some of the most light out of any of the weapons lights that were available at that time. Um, man, I'm going to guess, and I might be wrong, but I think it was like 120 or maybe 320 lumens or something like that uh, obviously lights have far surpassed that by now uh, but back in the early 2000s this was one of the brightest things on the market uh, I often joke around with people and tell them that some of the parts and pieces on this gun were made during a time where companies weren't paying a lot of attention 
to how much things weigh. Uh, this arms rail system weighs quite a bit. This Surefire light weighs quite a bit. Um, back here towards the back, uh, we've got the Surefire, I'm sorry, the uh, Magpul M93 stock. This was the first stock that Magpul had ever made. Uh, there was an experimental version of this stock that I had gotten from uh, the, the founder of Magpul, Ritz Fitzpatrick. Um, he sent me an experimental model to use and try. I would shoot every month at matches and take classes as often as I could uh, and provide feedback on, on what we thought of it. Um, and then when the actual one came out, I bought that and that's what's on here is that M93 stock. Uh, there used to be an old, old arms number 40 on here. Uh, I took that arms number 40 off and I put it on my Mark 12 Mod O because it's a little more appropriate for that. It's one of the older, older, I don't want to say the first 40s, but it was an old 40. Uh, and I put this 40L on here. Um, also, the Magpul Miad grip. This one is one of the experimental ones. Um, you probably can't see it here, but all the texture that's here, when you, when you got it, there was no texture. There was just these cutouts. And then you cut out skater tape or grip tape and you put them in these panels uh, on the back, on the side, and uh, on either side. Um, I know I've got the JP Enterprise trigger in here. I'm sure I know the exact reason I got that trigger was because that was the trigger they recommended on the Gunsight VHS tape, the carbine VHS tape that had Bill Jeans and some other guys in there. Uh, I thought that those things, those things were really kind of instrumental into how I got into ARs. And uh, the gunsmith that was on there, Ted Yost, he recommended the JP Enterprise trigger, so obviously that was what I had to go and buy. Um, uh, the Vortex Flash Hider, I remember the original Vortex Flash Hider that came on here, as I shot it for a while, it started to bloom out a little bit on the end. And uh, I took it to Kurt's Custom Gunsmithing here in Florida. Uh, I remember I drove it down there, it was right before we were gonna go to the Black Rifle Convention that was up in, Illinois. Uh, it was a big convention that AR15.com did. Uh, I went up to that and right before we were going to leave I noticed that my Vortex flash hider was was kind of blooming out and spreading the tines. Uh, and of course this is pinned and welded on here so it wasn't something that I could easily fix. Uh, I drove down to Kurt's Custom Gunsmith and uh, he repinned and welded on there for me uh, the same day which was awesome so I could make that trip. Um, man, I don't know. Oh, this is uh, of course the this came later, uh, this was the Magpul metal mag that had the window in it. This came out before there was the P-Mags. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually, it's not aluminum, it's a stainless steel mag. Uh, again, uh, it was something that Ritz Fitzpatrick had sent. Uh, it came with a GI mag with a window. So this was kind of pre, well it wasn't kind of, it was pre-P-Mags. Uh, and it was something that they were experimenting with. I'm not sure if they ever really put these out. Um, commercially or not. Um, oh, and as I'm looking at it, I see uh, this version of the Miad grip, like all the old versions of the Miad grip have the uh, built-in trigger guard. So uh, all Miad grips to this day, they have an interchangeable front strap here. You can change it for one that has uh, the finger groove or one that's smooth. Uh, but the first ones came out, they had one that also had the integrated trigger guard. So if I were to take this grip off, the trigger guard would be a part of that. Um, man, that's really it. I also noticed uh, there was a, a standard charging handle on here and it reminded me how there really wasn't a lot of upgraded charging handles to get back then. Um, I know the PRI Gas Buster was, was out. Um, it was kind of new. I know that uh, Badger Ordnance had some latches that you could put on your charging handle. Um, but man, that's about it. Probably almost everything you know of as an upgraded charging handle uh, or maybe even a standard charging handle on most guns these days, uh, they didn't exist back then. So I noticed that I had just a standard uh, charging handle on this one. So man, that was the first gun I ever built. And uh, I think I'm going to take it out to the match this, uh, this next weekend coming up and shoot it again. I don't think I've shot this gun in, I don't know, maybe 15 years, maybe 12 years, something like that. Uh, so it'll be fun to get it out there again. Uh, I'll have to eat my Wheaties that morning because, uh, like I said, this is a pretty hefty gun for what it is. All right, man, thanks. And uh, if you think this is interesting, let me know. Uh, make one yourself and tag us in it. Uh, show, us, show everybody the first gun that you ever built. All right, thanks. It's Neil from 2AF.